Hello everybody and welcome to Applied Energistics 2 1.12.2 mod tutorial for Spotlight. So today joining me is Dr. Energistic. He will be helping me out, showing you guys the very basics of this mod. So let's jump right into it with part 1. So first, you'll need a wooden gear, which is crafted with 4 sticks, just like this. Next, you'll need these two different types of ores. There are charged Certus Quartz Ore and Certus Quartz Ore. You can find them at around Y level 36, just in like mines and ravines. To find the charged Certus Quartz Ore, it, it shines and like, yeah, blue stuff comes off it like a particle. After you've mined that, the Certus Quartz Ore will drop like two to three Certus Quartz Crystals. And then I'll show you these for those in a minute. So next you'll need the quartz grindstone. So this bad boy is made from three stone, one wooden gear, three surgeous quartz crystals, and two cobblestone. Just like this. And then next you'll need this wooden crank, which is just made like this with five sticks. Next, you put the two of them together, you place down your quartz grindstone, shift right click the top of it with a wooden crank, and that, that's how you make the grindstone. So, next, you can use the grindstone, put in some Sirtis quartz crystals, nether quartz. And if you just hold down right click on this guy here in a moment, you will get Sirtis quartz dust and nether quartz dust. And I'll show you another use for this in a moment. Next, you'll need Fluix Crystals. Craft these by throwing in redstone, charged Certus Quartz, and Nether Quartz in a puddle, or really any body of water, and that will give you two, not three, two Fluix Crystals. You can then also put Fluix Crystals in your grindstone, and you'll get Fluix Dust. There's a lot of other stuff that you can grind, like Skystone, which we'll get into in the future. So that is the end of step one. Grindstone, and then Flux Crystals, Certus Quartz, Nether Quartz, and Charged Certus Quartz. So next, Dr. Energistics here has some more things to show us. So next we, one second, there we go. Next we need to make the Charger, which is five iron and two Flux Crystals like this. That makes the Charger, oh. In order to use the charger properly, you need a wooden crank or a power source. So either attach a power source on the top or bottom, or a wooden crank on the top. The charger is basically a charger, so if you have like items, say the matter ca cannon, that requires power. So you can just stick it in here. If you crank up this for like 30 minutes, it will be fully charged. But you see here, there's 960 AE charge, so it's 0.46% charged. So it charges up stuff like that, but the main thing it used, is used for is Certus Quartz and charging. So you, in order to find charged Certus Quartz, you have to find the ore, which is pretty rare. So if you just put in Certus Quartz in here, there we go, charged Certus Quartz crystal. So it charges your Sirtis Quartz into charged Sirtis Quartz Crystals. Next, you'll want to take the sand and then that dust you made in the grinder over there. Then, oh, you'll need a crafting. Crafting interface or inventory will work fine, but I'm in graded mode so I can't really do that. So there you go, Sirtis Quartz Seed. So it's one Sirtis Quartz Dust and one sand makes two Sirtis Quartz Seed along with Fluix Dust and Nether Quartz. So there you go, Fluix Seeds and Nether Quartz Seeds. Now to grow these, you just throw them in a puddle of water. But if you do it that way, it'll take it about 8 hours to just grow one seed. But if you throw like 20 in there, it'll take 8 hours to grow 20 seeds. So really, really inconvenient. So we'll just keep these on hand for a little while, and we can actually speed that up in the future. 
Last thing we're throwing in in part two is quartz glass. Quartz glass is useful for making machines and it kind of looks in better than, you know, glass. At least in my opinion. So what you'll need is five Sirtis quartz dust in a X. You can also use um, another quartz dust. And four glass, just like you made the um, gear over there. And next, Dr. Energistic here has many, many more things in part three. So we'll be going over all this in this part. So first what you'll need is, you see this up here? This is the best cable you can get, and I'll talk about cables in the future. But this is the best cable in the entire game. So the first thing you'll need to start creating your cable system is quartz fiber, which requires six glass, three surface quartz dust. It also takes nether quartz dust and any type of glass. Next, you'll need emi glass cables, which is made from one quartz fiber and two fluix crystals. Then you take your emi glass cable and a piece of wool, and then that makes a emi covered cable. Next, you take your emi covered cable, add glowstone and redstone, and that makes a emi smart cable. And if you take four emi covered cables, that will give you one emi dense covered cable. And then you take one emi dense covered cable, one redstone, one glowstone to make the best emi dense smart cable. So next, you'll want to start making crystal growth accelerators. You'll need five of these to make a the most beneficial crystal state setup. So you'll need four iron, two quartz glass, one fluix block, which is eight fluix, pure fluix crystals, or just four fluix crystals. And also two emi glass cables, just like this. There we go, we'll move on from here to, this is the setup you need to grow your crystals. It takes the time from about 8 hours to about 2 minutes. So let's throw all these guys in here. So to make this setup, you'll need a power source, which I'm using the creative energy cell. And I just like to use the emi glass cables because they're the most efficient and or not the most efficient, but they are the most, they're the cheapest to make. You don't have to go making like dense cables to make this. So just make sure you're connecting it like this. If you do it on its side, it will not connect. So make sure the top or the bottom is connected to a cable. And then you'll want to fill it up with some water. And there you go, that's how you build this. And don't worry about that chest down there. It's not necessary. But this is a Sirtis Quartz seed, like, while it's growing. And now, yep, you can see they're growing. They're at, like, 70-something percent. I'll just let those guys grow in there. And there we go, they are all grown. We have pure Sirtis... Pure Sirtis Quartz Crystals, Pure Fluix Crystals, and Pure Nether Quartz Crystals. And you'll need quite a few of those for the future. Next, you'll need these things called Inscriber Calculation Press. Oops, not brown concrete. Inscriber Engineering Press, Inscriber Logic Press, and Inscriber Silicone Press. And our friend here, Dolora the Explorer, is going to take us where you will find the... Uh, there we go. Thank you, Dolora. So here is where you will find the calculation, engineering, logic, and silicone presses. Um, these are meteors. You can usually find them because they leave glass and debris around where they land. They also are made up of these blocks called skystone. You'll definitely keep, on, keep a hold of some of this skystone because you'll need it in the future. So if you dig through a meteor and skystone, they're usually pretty tough, so you probably need at least a diamond pickaxe to mine this. Somewhere in here, 
there will be a sky stone chest. You can easily tell where it is because it stands out. Just don't know where it is in here. Two hours later. Aha, there it is. So this one just has the inscriber calculation and inscriber logic press. So we're missing the silicone and the engineering press, which means it'll take you at least probably three meteors in order to get all of the presses you need. Okay, moving on. Next, we're making the inscriber. The inscriber takes five iron, two sticky pistons, and one pure flux crystal. Anytime it says pure flux crystal, or at least like 50% of the time or so, you can also just use flux crystals. But I would suggest always using pure just because it's more efficient. And in order for an inscriber to work, we need a power source. So for me, again, it's a creative energy cell. Next, we have the circuits. Calculation, engineering, and logic circuits. We also have silicone. So in order to make the calculation circuit, you need pure service ports. And I'm pretty sure it is only pure service ports. Yes, so it's not service ports, it's pure service ports 100% of the time. So calculation press plus pure service ports makes printed calculation circuit. Also, little note. Whenever you have an inscriber, you can just take out your press. So you really only need one inscriber until you get later on in the game and get into automation and such. Anyway, next we're moving on to engineering. Engineering is the most expensive because it costs an entire diamond just to make one. There we go, printed engineering circuit. And then there's the logic, which is also pretty expensive because it requires gold. There we go. Printed logic circuit. Next, the last one is is silicone, printed silicone. So in order to just get normal silicone, you'll need certus quartz dust or nether quartz dust makes silicone. Just stick that in a furnace, gives you some silicone. You then stick your silicone in a inscriber with the silicone press, and it gives you printed silicone. And now over here, the processors, it's calculation, logic, and engineering. So in order to make this, it requires one engineering circuit, one redstone, and one silica, printed silicone. That's for the engineering processor. And then for the calculation processor, it's printed calculation circuit, one redstone, and one silicone. And then the same for the logic, except it's just got a logic circuit. So there you go, one calculation processor. And one logic processor. And that's all for all the processors and circuits. Next, you're making these two different types of cores. First, the formation core. That's created with one certus quartz and one fluid dust. And one logic processor. So that's what you need for creating the formation core. Next, the annihilation core is one nether quartz, one fluid dust, and one logic processor. Also, pure nether quartz can be changed out for nether quartz. Next, you need to create this thing called the illuminated panel, which is made up of quartz glass, glowstone, redstone, and iron. And then so remember these guys, the Emmy cables, these are smart cables, but you can actually dye these by just putting them in a crafting table, eight of them, and one piece of dye dyes them to that color. And the benefit of that is they are individual and do not connect to each other. Okay, this is an undyed one, but if it's a white dyed one and an orange, it will not connect. So that's great for making more complicated systems. Another cool thing is the panel will actually change color based on what it is connected to. And next we have the ME terminal, which is made from a annihilation co formation core, annihilation core, illuminated panel, and a logic processor. 
And here's another example. It also changes color for the different cables it's connected to. Next, we have the ME chest. It's like this. It also comes with a terminal built in the top, but I don't really like to use that. It's just harder. So the ME chest is crafted with a glass, ME terminal, two ME glass cables, two iron ingots, and a flux crystal. Just like this. And next we're moving on to the cells. So this is a 1k storage component, not cells, sorry, storage component. So that is created with four pure service quartz crystal, four redstone, and four logic processors. Next, the 4k ME storage components made of four redstone, three 1k storage components, one quartz glass, and one calculation processor. Next is the 16k ME storage component, four glowstone, one engineering processor, one quartz glass, and three 4k storage components. Next is the 64k storage component, which is four glowstone, three 16k, one quartz glass, one engineering processor, of course. And next to put them together is an ME storage housing, which is three redstone, two quartz glass, three iron, like this. Next, you can just put them all together. So this is any type of storage component makes any type of storage cell. So we've got 1K and an ME storage housing. There you go and so on and so forth with the rest of them. Next, we're moving on to the final station. Oh, hi, Dr. Energistic. How's it going? Yeah, hi. So, oh, what do you got there? Some sky stone and then some sky stone blocks. You make sky stone blocks by putting sky stone in a furnace and smelting it, and you get sky stone blocks. You then use sky stone blocks to make a ME controller. So it's four sky stone blocks, four pure fluix crystal, and it cannot be changed out for fluix crystal, and one engineering processor. A ME controller is has to be attached to a power source. It then takes power from that source, which in my case is the infinite storage cell, or power cell, or whatever. You can make these any way you really want, except a single controller cannot be connected to something in more than three sides. So you see this guy here, he's only connected by two sides. And so if I put one here, it's connected by four sides and does not work. And then this massive, huge storage cell, if I just attach one in this corner, it breaks entirely. So you know it's not working when it looks like this. And of course, both of these have a power source connected. Next, we're moving on to the final, final step. Factor Energistic here has some things for us. Oh wait, let me clear my inventory. He's got a 64k storage cell, a storage controller, some cables, an ME terminal, power source, and a ME chest. So you'll want to start, but this is, by the way, this is making your first ME system. So you'll want to put your power source down, your ME controller, and then you can just slap your ME chest right next to it. Put your 64k storage cell inside of it, and as you can see here, you can make it so compact that it only takes up three blocks, and you just like, you know, put your stuff in there. Put all these, come on, there we go. You can put stuff in it, and it's really nice. You can store a bunch of different things. But what I like to do is connect cables and then putting ME terminal or just a singular ME terminal. So like you can build this in one part of your base and then put this in like the wall of some other part of your base. And it's nice and convenient like that. Also, if you look on the cable, it's very hard to see, but you see that blue line there? Well, if I take away that ME terminal 
it's gone here. I'll set it today so you can see it. There you go. Nothing there. And then if I put on two, there's two lines. And if I just keep on adding to it, eventually you'll see this other color of a line show up. And then pretty soon, it's full. So if you look there, there are eight lines. So that is how many channels a singular system of ME smart cables can work. So if I were to put another one on here, then this guy back here would no longer work. All the other terminals work. See, I'll prove that by putting my creative energy cell in. You do not see it in that one, but in all the other terminals, you can see it. So that's because it only can handle eight different devices, and since there are nine devices on this channel, it will not work. However, if I were to break that, just place three on here instead of four, and then if I wanted to place these up here, I could add eight more channels. And of course, you can set up up to eight things on a network by doing it like this. So you plug it in, and that takes up one channel. And then I'm just using the ME terminals as an example. There are actually many other things that take up channels. But now you look there, it's using channels. This is using channels. So really, you can add, you can make this very, very, very advanced. And you can connect something to any side or to five sides of this because you still need to have your power source, which is down there. The ME Dense Smart Cable. So this basically is a cheaper version of the controller. So if you were to look on here, you see that only two of the channels are being used, even though every single one of these are being used. That is because these can hold 32 channels, and the small cables can only hold eight. So now you can branch off more networks off of dense cables. And then if you start filling those up, you'll start seeing more and more channels. So each individual line on here stands for four channels. So right now that means there are approximately... There are a lot. There's actually something that can help you easily find out how many things you have connected to your system. And I'll show you that in the next video. So yeah, you can just go crazy. I'm just using ME terminals as an example. There are also crafting terminals, interfaces, and a bunch of other things I'll get into in the future. So yeah, now you can see it is completely used up this dense cable. So I hope this has helped you understand the basics of an ME system. Please drop a like for Dr. Energistic. He worked really hard setting all this stuff up. And I just, just got to give him all that credit. He spent hours building this guy alone. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next video.